following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. Hope everybody had a great new year. We're going to have a lot of fun today. I'm super looking forward to today. Oops, to today's show. Before we get started, let's say hi to everybody. I'm starting off with our cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Well, it's the new year. And the opening song says Crazy Jimmy. Well, that could be dubbed over with Crazy Ronnie. You know, I'd like to be named in the opening song. I am on this show for like a thousand years. And I am a critical part of this show, so people say. So you got to get Ozzy to make a new one. No, just dub it in. Where the Jimmy is, we'll edit that out on the on the voice. You go on the machine here; it goes where voice voices. You blank it, and then you simply replace it with Ronnie, crazy Ronnie. That that's more befitting. <laughs> no, I don't know how to do that, but if you can do it, that's good. Well, <clears throat> you got to do some of these things. <laughs> There's no business like show business that Jimmy doesn't know about the business. Anyway. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. She says our hair looks great. Our Who's hair? Look on both of us. No, I just washed mine, and it, it has a mind of its own. You know, all my life, I've never... My teachers in school, when I was in elementary school, a young boy, used to put me, like, on parole or something. They did bad... They would call my parents and say, your son never combs his hair. He is not well-groomed. So on my report card, when they had well-groomed, they had needs to comb hair. So being an eight-year-old little big mouth, I said to the teacher, hey, listen, twat, get over here. I want to show you something. And she came over. I, of course, I didn't call her a twat. I called her a snatch. But anyway, no, I called her whatever her name. Mrs. Harrington was her name. She's a real bitch. Anyway, I showed her. I wet my hair with a comb and I combed it. She said, now, Rolando, because that's my real name, you look like a groomed boy. And this is how you must always wear your hair. Well, 20 minutes later, it looked like this. She said, what happened? I said, my hair has a mind of its own. It goes where it wants. When it dries, it says, screw you, Ron. I want to be this way. And that's how. It... So all my life, I have never had groomed or combed hair. Uh, so we want to give some. That's sh- a very boring story, so but it fills time. I want to give some shout outs. So what's up? Wait, Steph- before you do shout outs, I have some mes- messages to say. Okay. Um. I'm very upset with the Pope because he said that people that adopt pets are selfish, that we should adopt children. And I wrote back, our pets are our children, and the Pope should mind his business and not tell people what to do. (laughs) He's there to preach about Jesus, not about who should have children and who should not. I am sick and tired of this country and this world telling us what to do and what not to do. We are losing our freedom of thought. These people are putting thoughts in our head by saying you must do. And that's very, very like commie talk. You know, the commies do that. That's all I want to say. All right. What's up, chat room? First, I want to say hi to Stefan Bell, who's trying to get in the chat room, but it won't let him in. I don't know why. Stefan Bell is always trying to get in. The poor guy never gets in. So he's in there. So say Happy New Year, Stefan. We got people in the chat room. What's up? We've got uh, B. Claudia in Germany. Teresa Sabin, who's in Florida. Boomer Mays, um, who said that's right. Hold on. Uh, yeah, people have to stop telling us don't have kids, have kids, don't have dogs, don't have dogs, wear a mask, don't wear a mask. The virus is bullshit. The virus is real. You know, the president is wonderful. The president stinks. I mean, everybody's got these opinions. Jesus Christ, keep them to yourself. 
We want to also give a shout out. Oh, uh, Diane is in the chat room, and I think Courtney. I think I saw Courtney in the chat room, but she's gone. Uh, Courtney's. She's a gone, gone, gone girl. I'm uh, in a good mood. Well, I wanted to talk about my oh, little... backpack. John is in the chat room. What's up, you guys? Wait, Happy New Year! I have to talk about this fabulous a shirt jack I have on. This is a shirt jacket. I found it in Macy's. Originally, it was fifty five dollars, which I thought. The fabric is like pajama fabric. They got to be kidding. But it was on sale for $15.99. So yours truly snapped it up quickly and bought it. And I love it. It's cozy. It's comfortable. And it's warm. And I think it's got a great look to it. A different look. So I have it. But if you go to Macy's, I don't think there are any more left. Because they're in, the, in, in, our, in Palm Springs. Because there was only one more left. And that was an extra, extra large, I believe. Or this is an extra large. Backpack John said NASA, NASA hired 24 theologians. I don't know what that – he said tell Ron. I don't know really what that means. <laughs> NASA theologians. Yeah, the, theologians are like bullshit artists, I think. Is that what a theologian is? No, a theologian is like a – I thought that's like a god person. Yeah, as I said, bullshit artists. Okay. <laughs> I know what a theologian is. Now they're going to go out and out of space to find God. They like all our hair, though, so that's good. So I'm letting my hair grow, you guys. Ron mm -hmm. likes it better longer, so yeah, we're he should grow it into a long. He should wear a big wing wave on one side and one behind the ear with long rhinestone earrings. He <laughs> could impersonate Marilyn Monroe with a beard. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys, we had a very fun New Year's Eve. We went to Sue Wong's house for New Year's Eve, and it was a lot of fun with a lot of friends. We met a lot of new new friends, and there was a lot of old friends, and it was just a great time. About 170 people in that living room. Could you believe? That living room was 60 by 40, and she had hundred almost 200 people in that living room and in the solarium, which is adjacent to the living room. I love her house. I love her. I love her lifestyle, and I love the fact that she allows us in to enjoy her lifestyle. Because she's worth a lot of money. Uh, I'm not. Actually, I had a bunch of people who helped and volunteered. Diane and Repetto is in the chat room. She's one of them, and she was there. And uh, we had Joe Kelly from Clown Motel. And we had Dave Bailey and Courtney and Twyla, who's always in the chat room, you guys, was, in the, was helping us. And uh, well, Ted. They, this was a sneaky way to get them in. And Ted you know, was in the chat room and the, Mike the, Ferguson was there. The invitation was only 200 of her closest friends. And, of course, she doesn't know these people. These are people that we like and know and work with. So that was a good way of getting them in the party. So it was fun. And also, who was there? Who, so Sasha Stone was there. Who I said, are you gay? And he looked at me and said, no. I said, well, you look like a fag. Look how you're dressed. You come to a formal black tie event like this. I had no idea who he was. I just thought he was some riffraff that wandered in. Turns out he was Sasha, who's a big shot and Sue adores him. But he laughed and he loved my honesty. And he said, listen, I just flew in from Bali and I don't have clothes. I said, well, you know, there's this right down the road, there's a couple of stores you could go to. We also had a girl named Brandy. I don't want to leave her out since I got everybody else in there. Who's Brand Brandy? Brandy helped us. Okay. At the show. Brandy helped us. And also, you guys, so we were there with um, Pittman. What's his name? Uh, uh, and John Barrymore's son came. That's Drew Barrymore's brother. He's very pleasant. His girlfriend was nicer. And then, uh, let's see, the actors we had that were there. A couple of big ones. We had Young Zuck was a cool hip hop artist that I met along with um, uh, and Billy Zane. Billy Zane who was had there. Had a mask on and wouldn't talk to anybody. Our but, guests that are coming on Zane, now. Billy Zane's not very friendly anyway. Our guests that are coming on right now that'll be on in a few minutes. This Richie Rich and Mr. Creature. D. They're this, like the, the greatest no, he, people you'll ever meet. Richie Rich is totally an insane creature, and I adore him. And Larry Namer was there, you guys. And Larry Namer's working with Richie and, Rich and, and Frank, Mr. D. I can't remember Frank's last name, but he's the handsome guy I'm in pictures with. And you've seen him on television and in all kinds of film. And then who else? There were so many uh, other celebrities there. I don't remember who. But they were there. They were floating around. They came in. They went out. It was a lovely party. It was very reminiscent of the parties I used to go to 40 years ago in old Hollywood when the uh, great legends had those parties. Scott Page was there. Pa yeah. I have to like look at the pictures, actually. Yeah, it, was a, it was a whole bunch of people. Go on Facebook and if you're interested. Diane Repetta says, oh, my God, I love Richie Rich. Richie Rich is very Oh, cool. he's demented. He needs help. <laughs> I need to help him. I can't wait to take him to all the gay bars when he comes to Palm Springs <laughs> to show him off. I love, I love, I love him. 
He is absolutely insane, but I love him. It's so much fun. So, um, um, let I me do a, him to a come quick on. ad thing. Have a lot of fun with him. So, you guys, uh, you can listen to the Jimmy Star Show on uh, here's our biggest platforms: iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, TuneIn, Pandora, Amazon Prime, and SoundCloud. We're on about 140 about, more, but those right. are the biggest ones. And, um, and if we had to mention all of them, the show would only be about us. And it's not about us. It's about those that come on our show. And, um, uh, and we want to just so th- wait a minute. Nobody in the chat room's commenting on my shirt, Jack. I love it. They all said it looks great. No, look at the print. It's like, a, it's like an Indian print, like, a, you know, American, uh, Native American. They don't call them Indians anymore. That bullshit changed, too. Uh, how, how about sex in the city? Is that stupid when she has to refer? She can no longer refer to her her transsexual daughter as she. Now she's called there or they. What the <laughs> fuck are they nuts? I mean, I have hard time understanding as it is. So now when they say they are coming, I'll say, who are they? Well, Mary or Mary and who else? Just Mary. So why are you saying Mary, they? Though, they means two, not one. <laughs> I mean, that's how I was taught. Anyway, these young jerks that are so politically correct and so easily offended by everything should grow up. You know what? If we were at war and they were put in the military, they wouldn't be doing this bullshit because the military would knock all that nonsense out of their brain and make them realize that we are in serious trouble economically as well as politically. And we need change and we need intelligence. We don't need them, they, and her, and she, and your sister's ass. We don't need that crap. Don't complicate things. We have this virus. They said it's hard. It keeps changing. It's hard to keep up. Right. The (laughs) virus keeps changing, and, and that's hard to keep up with. And we have enough on our plate without doing this nonsense about everybody's so offended. In my days, you could call anybody whatever you wanted. Nobody gave a shit. We used to laugh at it. I mean, you know, people would say like, oh, that fag down the road. And I never got offended. Now I'm not even allowed to say fag, but I say fag anyway, because I don't give a shit. All right. We're going to bring in Richie uh, Richie. and Mr. D. We're going to bring them both in. It looks like they're like here. So let's bring them in and see if we can hear them. And then I'll uh, do a nice introduction for them. Hello. Hello. Hey, superstars. Jimmy Starr and Ron Russell. How are you doing today? Fantastic. Hi. Boom. There he is. <laughs> there he is, my new love. I love it. All right. You guys. I love both of you. Oh my gosh. You like made our New Year's. Yeah, hey, yeah. That's I, how. I, what happened? Mr. D just left. Richie, I think you have to be committed as soon as possible. <laughs> But well, you know what? I came I from a, I came from a glitter away. factory, so if they send me back there, I'm fine. <laughs> Listen, if if they put you away in a nut house, I'd be the first one to get you out. Because oh, I baby, we'll have so much. We'll go, Thank you, Rob. And we'll end up we'll end up at the Abbey together and have a blast. I can't wait to take you to the gay bars in Palm Springs and show you. Oh, my God. I I just heard you um, before you intro us. And thank you for that. Uh, One of our best friends, Diana Coney, she just moved to Palm Springs and she she manages all the drag race girls. So we need to go with you and we all have to kick you together. She's going to love you. It'll like love it. So hold on. Let me do a real introduction. I know most. Shut your fucking mouth before I put this mic. No, up we're gonna ass. do. We're gonna do a real introduction. <laughs> I like to beat the shit out All of right, everybody. Show. Now we want. Wait, it's time to fight. People love it when we fight. So every week, <laughs> I give them a little fight, and I make nicknames for him, like Queen Essa or Mary Lafera. You know, I have all these names for him. Okay, but let me do an introduction. Today, I'm gonna call you Obnoxia. <laughs> okay, that's obnoxious fine. I could be the obnoxious. obnoxious fucking fan. All right, everybody. So now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star w- Show with Ron Russell. Two incredibly huge yes. icons in the world of fashion yes. and beauty. We one, wanna... is, one is normal, one is nuts. No, no, they're both nuts, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to wait. Didn't let me finish the introduction. No, because you're boring. Nobody no, wants to stop. I gotta do it. All right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Two incredibly huge fashion icons <laughs> in the world, Richie Rich and Mr. D. Hello and welcome to the show. Hey. Hi. Everybody out there in the Jimmy Star Show. So great to be yeah. here today. We are so flattered, aren't we, Richie? So before I mean, we, I, now, now listen, and Jimmy, Ron, Jimmy and Ron, you're you're everything. We love you. Everything. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sweetie. And everybody out there, thank you for being here with us. Oh my God, we're so excited. So we have a chat room. Only full five of people. million people. Say hi. Say, say hi wow. to the chat room. Say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, everybody in the chat room. I mean, we want to kiki and chat with you right now, and and write your comments and say hey and 
we're here. We're all we're actually all here in Hollywood, which is amazing. Like we're usually so, in New York as well. So before I have two people, you have to give special shout outs to the first one who Ooh. sent me an email saying, oh, my gosh, you have Richie Rich. Uh, you have Richie Rich and Mr. D. And she sent me all these press clippings on you guys. And she's a huge Adam Lambert fan. And you guys know, and you know, know. Adam Lambert, which makes it a, a big thing. for oh, her. Yeah. her name is B. Claudia and she's in Germany and she's like been advertising that you're uh, coming on the show. All of us. We so love Germany. To- Say hi to B. I was, just, in, I was just in Germany in, in July. Hi, B. Claudia. We love you. Boom, you boom. Go. That'll keep her going forever. And then we have our champagne girl, Diane, from Sue Wong's party that you guys took over the champagne bar in there saying how great you guys are. So say hi to <laughs> Diane. All right, Diane. We love hey, you. Diane. And I, make, I am making you one of the hats. I wore this hat, if you recall, you, both of you and oh, all of you. And she wanted that hat. So I am making you one, Diane. Oh, there we go. And what a fabulous way to start the new year, wasn't it? Ron, we know, oh was having a blast. God. Jimmy, you were just absolutely spectacular. Ooh, and we had such a great time at home. Absolutely. I had a good time because I saw a lot of people that I don't usually see often. So for me, it was All like right. just nice to know that they're well, they're happy, they're together. And most of them were old bags, you know, like me. They were not kids. So when you meet the old bags, you say to yourself, thank God this one's still around. Because I've lost everybody that I know, you know, Jane Russell, Mr. Blackwell. I mean, wow. they're all, all of them are gone now, the great legends of Hollywood. So the few that are left, I'm so happy to see. So that was my reward of the new year. So, so I you wanna, won't understand that I, yet until you're my yeah, age. You, and and you, I must say, earlier you commented about what you're wearing. I love your shirt and I loved your blazer on New Year's Eve, the brocade. Oh, yeah, the that, nice? yeah, he loves right. that. that was that was major. Well, I wore Ooh. that for Sue because it matched the colors in her living room, and it had uh, it had an oriental flavor to it, and exactly. that's why I wore it. So real quick, Ooh. you guys, I'm going to do a little – we're going to talk about your new venture and everything as yes. we talk about things, but I'm going to do some bragging for you guys so anybody who doesn't know who you are will know. So we're going to start out with Mr. D. And, yes. Um, basically, you guys, this guy is the pioneer of, brand, of fashion branding. He put – fashion entertainment on the map before anybody his best known credits are uh he did the supermodel breakthrough special with the victoria's secrets models nars which i have a really good friend who used to be like uh in charge of nars i forgot his name though because it's been a long time but you did their cosmetic debut um he's done pop concert extravaganzas for versace um you guys remember the day when ed hardy when everybody who was anybody had ed hardy on it the reason you know about ed hardy is because of this guy right here He's um, worked with Kate yes. Moss, Linda Evangelista, John Bon Jovi, Naomi Campbell, David Stewart, Mark Anthony, Elton John, Tony Hawk, Snoop Dogg, Madonna, and many more. I was his number one uh, underwear model last year. Yes. And <laughs> yes, Ron. I was. I We, we got a, a big pillow from the sofa, and we put it in my underwear, and that's why I got Ooh. so many likes. <laughs> that's how you do it. <laughs> so then, you guys, Richie Rich, whose motto is everybody is a star, legendary fashion designer, club kid, pop culture star, style uh, style idol and icon. Um, I was a big fan of Heatherette, so you guys, he had a clothing line, Heatherette, with Travis Raines. Um, all his fashion shows would always kick off Fashion Week from New York to Tokyo, Celebrities that have uh, been in his clothes, Paris Hilton, Miley Cyrus, Naomi Campbell, Pink, uh, Pink, Fergie. Um, he had stores in L.A. and New York. He also had the House of Richie Rich for collaborations. Um, Ellen DeGeneres, Dita Von Teese, Pamela Anderson featured on the runway. He's on, been on America's Next Top Model, Project One Runway. And in 2019, he was inducted into the New York Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yeah. For an award-winning dress. Now, tell me that bitch ain't going places. <laughs> <laughs> Aww, that was so sweet of you. Thank you, Boo. Uh, so wow. it's like fa- it's fabulous. So, so being such a big shot, you are you conceited? If you meet a sharp guy and you go over, do you throw your resume at him, or do you just look at him and say, "I'm good in bed"? Well, first of all, I can only speak for myself, but I go to a New Year's party and I meet. The, well, I, I ran back into both of you, and we all bartended together. We popped all the corks for midnight. So that's how you do life, right? Hello. That's right. You've avoided my question. I, no, he's not, first of all. Well, no, uh, I'm saying like like like. Like, well, oh, God, are, I'm, you, I'm, you, you are I'm gay. It's fun. I think, though, that you are. Oh, yeah. like, you, you are My gay. middle name is fun. So, I mean, that's called popping. No, I, I think I can answer for Richie in that any room he walks into, even any street he walks down. We were on Fairfax the other day. We were walking down Sunset Plaza area. They walk up to Richie. They run up to Richie, and they all know who he is already. And that's what's so spectacular because about Richie. Does, I mean, that's sincerely. He does it with such honesty, and that's what yeah. I found. 
I found yeah. him to be an honest way out guy, not a fraud. You know, a lot of people do that to hide behind an inferiority complex. They're really shit. And they doll up like that to look like somebody. But this guy, even naked, is somebody. So they've told me <laughs> many men. Yeah, Actually, and, and Richie has, Richie has yeah. rewritten the rules of fashion. And he spells it his own way, and it's a big F U N, and that's what it is. It's all about fun. Richie, when are you and coming? Diana, Wait, shut up for a minute. Where are you coming to Palm Springs? Oh my God, we're, we are so coming. Can we do like a, a fun beauty queen, which we'll get into later? A fun beauty queen, like some kind of party, or and then just kiki at your favorite places, your spots there. I will come like soon. We're here, so like. It's very hard to get a party going in Palm Springs because everybody has to come in from L A. And a oh, lot right. of people are working. Oh, I don't even care if it's a party for like five of us. Like that to me, that's a fun party too. That's, it'll be, <laughs> well, I could take you to the nursing home and the senior citizen places, <laughs> yeah. and I'm sure we can entertain them. I just watched they, the documentary if, if on, they, on if they wake up. Oh, and Frank Frank Sinatra, like how he like that was his like hideaway in Palm Springs, right. and like yeah. oh my, that's so cool. They really made like, Palm Springs look good. It's changed. It looks like L.A. now. Right. Well, what are you going to do? You know, things changed. I've changed. Yeah, we, all, we also went over to the Sportsman Lodge. We were shooting an episode over there at the Sportsman Lodge, which now is turning into a shopping mall, which there's a lot of history there with Sinatra supposedly playing there and D. Martin, an amazing, iconic location in Los Angeles. Well, what's pissing me off is that wonderful restaurant that they kept original from 1953 at the Duke. What is it called? I can't think of it. It's right on... Uh, 111. Oh my God. Frank Sinatra used to tell the owner, I'm coming in with friends. Don't let public in. He held it always for his gang wow. of friends. And the friends were Peter Lawford, Marilyn Monroe, the Kennedys. I mean, these ah. are the people. Oh yeah, these are the people that Frank knew, mafioso also. But that restaurant Ooh. now I understand has closed. And wow. I'm really pissed because it is an absolute landmark. The problem with America is we are a disposable country. In Europe, they have a history that goes back thousands of years. They don't knock down the Colosseum to put up an arena. We have that tendency to do that. And I really wish that people in California would respect Hollywood and what Hollywood was mm. in. Am I getting boring? Yes, yeah. I am. I to... <laughs> uh, but I, I totally, I, we agree though with you. I mean, of course. I totally yeah, agree. And you know what? That's the what Hollywood's was... about. Well, wait, the food was fucking delicious. It wasn't even <laughs> shitty food. It was like German, Swedish, delicious. I mean, and the restaurant had all this junk on the wall, all tchotchkes, momentums. You walked in, you as you were eating, you, it was a beaut. I really wish they so would keep quick. it open. So Mr. D, Diane in the chat room says she still has her Ed Hardy. And I don't know if you guys remember, but Brandy was another Ooh. one of my like helpers. And Brandy <laughs> just joins for the task. So say hi to Brandy because she was with us. Hi, on Brandy, Year's love. Year. You were so sweet. Boom, boom. So I have to say, so uh, for many years, I was a clothing designer, and, and Richie, I oh, would follow yeah, everything that you did there as Heather Ed. I followed everything because I thought, how cool. Um, I only made one-of-a-kind clothes, and I dressed Elton John and Madonna and all kinds of people in. I know. When I saw you at Suze, I was so excited you were there. I know, I'm know i a fan. Hello. And, uh, and I thought and I thought, because I thought when I saw you, though, I was like, I, I, uh, I wonder if Richie Bitch is going to be like still be really like cool. And so I want to say, first of all, I'm super glad that you're still cool as fuck. And uh, yeah, but I, I met, I've met you before the party. Yes, in New York. Uh -huh. in, yeah, I know. In yes, New York. And then I that's what I was saying earlier. It was so nice to see both of you again. Yeah, I and, remember you. And, and also, you were like, you made me so happy. I was like, boom. I'm supposed who, who, who to. I'm supposed you. to say hi from Eileen Shapiro too. She's my business partner. In I love Eileen. So say oh, hi. Eileen. Hello, Eileen Shapiro. Uh, yeah, you happy glitter year, Eileen. You know Come on, Eileen. Yeah, he used to hang out at the bunk house when she owned it. You know Eileen. She's the one with the enormous tits. <laughs> oh, we know Eileen, baby. I love her. <laughs> I, used, I, I used, I know Eileen from the bunkhouse when she had short white Hello. blonde hair. That's how many years Hello. ago I met her. Oh, Eileen, Eileen, you're coming to Palm Springs. Hello. Yes, yeah, she'll be the guest list. If they have the Grammy party, she's coming in. If they're supposed yeah. to be now canceling the Grammys, they're postponing, postponing the it. So yeah. we don't know. Because I was looking so forward to going. Are you, you going to the Grammys party? It was a different oh, one. I always love the Grammys. Grammys parties, the Grammys, right? the, the Grammys have always been so crazy because, like in New York, where like where I usually start Fashion Weeks, like and uh, we're always dressing somebody for the Grammys, but it's always like the night before Fashion Week starts. It's always like the biggest fashion potpourri, like wow, like you basically like the energy is alive. It's so cool. Like I like love. Uh, I like the Grammys in New York. I just think it brings, but it's very LA too. I, don't know, I like both. Yeah. I mean, well, the Grammy party that we went to at the Roosevelt Hotel was wonderful. It I mean, was the, the Roosevelt. It was the main, oh, it was the main ballroom 
that all the movie stars of the 1930s and 40s used to go to as a nightclub. So that Ooh. was like the haunting of the great legends, Clark Gable, Gene Harlow, you know, Marilyn Monroe. Uh. Supposedly her ghost is still in that room. But I found that to be exciting because it was all Hollywood. But I've never been to one in New York. So, so Mr. D, how did you two guys actually like meet? How did you two meet? Did you fall in wow, love? Wow, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> absolutely. You know, it's funny. I think we met backstage um, at a Versace fashion show in Manhattan. Uh, where Versace was just coming to New York and doing his thing, and uh, Rich and I were, you know, the youngest ones there, and we noticed each other. And he just was wearing this most extravagant, amazing outfit with the glitter pants and the metallic, sparkly silk blouse. And we just started talking, and we've been best friends ever since that moment. I like um, yeah, it was, that. It was, it was that Versace show, I think. Yeah, we had, we had a blast, and we still are having a blast, and more to come. So where are you showing your goods now? Are you you're manufacturing? No, no, we're going to talk about it. No, because Ron doesn't know what it is because he never researches anything. But no, I have I, been. I, I, like, I, I signed up for the site no, this on. morning. We are, we are. But Richie would answer that. Richie would say his goods are right here on no. your airways. Yeah, baby. I, <laughs> I, I like Right my, there. You're looking at it. I don't like pre uh rehearsed questions because it stinks i don't know anything mm -hmm. about most people and i like to find out and that's i like that we, better too well my backstage, audience not to cut you out but backstage in fashion weeks people the only thing they could ever ask my friends and i were what's your inspiration i'm like can't you come up with something else like like yeah. like i don't know even like and i always said like if i and it's true I made this collection one time and I was like, you know, it's kind of writer's block and it all comes to you. And I'm walking down the street on a rainy day in New York and it, there was like a puddle and I saw a rainbow in it because the oil, I guess, got in there. And I was like, it inspired a whole fabric collection. And that was the inspiration. But it's like, just to ask what's your inspiration, it, it's almost like they have no life to them when they ask that stuff. Well, you know like, what it is? They really don't, they really don't have great personalities. Uh, yeah. I'm going to brag. I have a great personality. You don't know me. <laughs> I'm a Gemini. I'm off the wall. I'm crazy, and then both of you put together. So when well, I, I love you at the party because you you say what's on your mind. You're like yeah. Well, you know <laughs> well, that's why I don't rehearse. I don't like even if I'm in a movie. I don't like to rehearse. I like oh, it I'm fresh, the worst. I like it fresh and real. So anything I say, forgive me. I just say it. It's in the moment. It's in the moment. It's in the moment. But so I, yeah. think, I think you two are terrific. So I've nothing. Going off script is negative. always best. But again, <laughs> a question. Are either one of you manufacturing because our people would like maybe to buy some of your goodies. So what have you, what are you pushing? What are you selling? Anything? Well, well, right now we're manufacturing something that really can't be made in a synthetic. It's completely organic and it's called fabulosity. And there's no one bigger in fabulousness than Richie Rich. And we're privileged and honored, Aww. not just to be here to talk about it for the first time since we started around 48 hours ago and went up with beautyqueen.com, but to have Richie at the front of it, and the back of it and every which way around it is just spectacular for not just his fans, but a whole new set of young teens oh, you and tweens a, and dreams hang on, hang on. that are going to be watching our live you streams. Direct me. I tell you, and, and, you fucking direct me. I'm going to punch you in the face. Well, let him finish talking. He's not letting and, him and finish. Part no, of our, I'm trying to get in because sometimes sentences are too long. Get in. Go to Come on. We're here. Tell I us. want to get in. Do you have Go a men's ahead. line? Do you have a men's line? No, you don't. Shut the fuck up. Am I interviewing you or him? Today you're <laughs> irritating me. I'm going to smash you through a window. You're irritating the shit. He out said of me. beauty queen. You dumb fucking fruit. You're irritating. <laughs> Tell him what Beauty Queen is, and what then is he'll beauty know what queen? it is. That, that's Richie Rich is a Beauty Queen. Who, what's Beauty Queen? What's a, I'll let Richie take that, but I could just start by saying it's a makeup metaverse for makeup freaks everywhere. Oh, Teens, man, queens, I, I could dreams, use makeup, you and everyone. That bastard. I could use makeup. I'd use it when I make movies. <laughs> would I, would I Richie, use why don't you take that question? What would your would, answer be? Would I use your makeup? Oh, yeah, baby. But right now what we're doing is, what D is saying is, so we just launched Beauty Queen TV. And it's beautyqueen.com. You spell B T Y K W N. And it's 24 7 dreaming streaming. And D, take it away. It's like the lifestyles of the glitterous and the fabulous. And we really wanted to find a place that, you know, there's this whole segment of kids out there that are kind of flying their flag of independence by being themselves, dressing themselves, and wearing makeup. And certainly, when I was coming up in the fashion industry and entertainment, and I met Richie that day backstage at Versace. Um, he was the inspiration for that for many, many, many kids. He was always doing gender fluidity before gender fluidity was a thing. And Richie really pioneered that in a very big way in New York and Los Angeles and Paris, everywhere he went. And now there's these kids that are just looking for an outlet to come together 
and be part of your community. And so we really wanted to create the first authentic community for those kids that whether they consider themselves, like you were saying earlier, a boy or a girl or a they or them, whatever you might be, just be yourself, keep dreaming, and come into this community, meet other like-minded enthusiasts. Wait, wait hang on, hang on. Keep fighting. Fuck dreaming. Dreaming dreams don't go anywhere. Fighting does. Listen, I did drag for forty-five years as Jane Russell. I love I it. I played every nightclub in the, in the United States. That I didn't go to gay bars. I did straight nightclubs. Okay, and I really look good in drag. You can't believe this big guy could possibly be a beautiful woman, but I was. I see it. And. I used to have such <laughs> no, and I used to have such problem with that because back in the 60s, 1960s, drag queens were thought of mentally ill uh, faggots who wanted to be women. We weren't talent. The fact that I sang in my own voice, spoke in my own voice, wrote my own material, that was never recognized. That's oh my God, me. I love wow. that's me. Wow. Living. As oh my gosh. Yeah, yes, I, was, but I was very it, famous in New York. They used to put posters on lampposts and walls of ooh. buildings. You know, I was a big shot back in the night. I mean, Ron, that story of perseverance and that and Teresa, story Teresa, you're of, right. No, but guys, I had to fight my way through it. I had to fight. And it's, yeah. and it's still a fight. And it's still a fight for oh, me. Yeah. Oh, and we get my whole, all my, names my, on the I once took oh, a yeah. cab. I was working at the townhouse restaurant, which my friends Bob and Paul. I love the townhouse. Yeah, well, I opened it and I was the only person that ever worked there. Amazing. Because they're my friends. I took a cab from my 75th Street apartment to, to work and I was thrown out. When he found out I wasn't a woman, he stopped the cab and said, get out of my cab. So I proceeded to punch his fucking face in <laughs> like he has never been hit. He was bleeding and crying. And I said, of course, ran away because I didn't want to be arrested and drag and ruin my name. But I beat that fucking turban up that he never saw tomorrow. But he threw me out of the cab because he realized I was a man, not a woman. That's the shit that I we mean, had to put up with. And I mean, it still happens. That's the thing. It's like we have this amazing, uh, like, talent we found that we cast like these kids around the world. We we see kids, you know, they're they're all like young. They're young ages because they're new to everything, but you were a pioneer for it. And, and I feel like, you know, Dee and I have done a lot as well, like and Jimmy and, you know, there's still a fight. Our friend, he can't even go out in Louisiana and drag. Like it's still a, it's still the fight. And that's what we mean by dreams. It's like, it's but the same sort of thing me. you're talking about. A woman will put on a three piece striped man suit and go right. out. Nobody cares. But well, if, a guy Dietrich on, for that. if a guy puts on a dress, they beat the shit out of him. That's what yeah. I don't understand. You know, people have got to learn. Mind your fucking business. Go about your business. <laughs> do your thing. Live your life. You should only That's live right. your yeah. life and let people fucking live. They don't bother you. Just, they're not oh, you know, money but, to buy and you know, is, okay? Yeah, you know these days, too, like people that even think are in the know, they, they their, their arms are in the air when you put the wrong color nail polish on or whatever. Or if you even have nail polish on as a boy or a guy it's like absolutely break. yeah i mean a beauty I queen a beauty queen richie is going to be the ringmaster of it all because he's been there he's done it and he's still going there and as am i mm -hmm. as of you jimmy as okay. we all Ready? still are and, you know and we can't change the world we can't change the world but we're surely trying to help as much as we can step by step as richie says glitter by glitter by glitter and let these yeah. kids and let everyone you know hey, listen, have a on. voice and have a place that's what listen. it's all about and we want and we want the other generations too to know about marilyn monroe more than they just think it's a poster of her like right i mean, like I mean to hear your story so ron would be so but let so me tell, let me tell, yeah. let, for them. let me tell you you're something. coming on beauty queen Wait, we have we have come a long way from 1960. Mm -hmm. a friend of oh, mine yeah. had a studio in brooklyn it was by day a gymnasium and at night he made it a gay bar it was called green's wow. studio he said, Ron, do me a favor. Would you come and drag and perform? I said, absolutely. I'd love to. I went. And as I was performing, the police broke in. Drag queens were jumping out of the window, swinging from the fire escapes into hitting garbage pails below. People were panicking. I had a cabaret card. A cabaret card was something I got when I had to go to the police station and register, my, register myself as an impersonator of a woman or I would be arrested because it was against the law in New York City to have more than, uh, you, uh, you have to have 10 items of a man on you in order not to be arrested. So I showed the cops my card. And of course they could not arrest me because I was a cabaret performer. Now, as we're going down the stairs, 
the fucking cops grabbed me by my arms, lifted me by my elbows, and threw me in the paddy wagon. Now, somebody out there was taking pictures, and the next day there was a headline, Jane Russell arrested. So <laughs> I went to stay Wow, well, that's I have, amazing. I, I have the clipping still. Of course, it's yellow and rotted. And I cracked up laughing. Many years I mean, when later, you... Wait, hang oh, on. Let me finish the story. Many yeah, years yeah, yeah. later, when I met Jane and became Jane Russell's dear best friend, I showed oh. her the article, and she said, oh, my God, I never knew of that. I said, yeah, they thought you were a drag queen. <laughs> but she must that's have lit... That's what I was, was going like. to say when they raided the cabaret, when they raided the gym, that was the, the, the bar that, that night. Right. It sounds like the best party to go to ever. You know, it's something right when the cops come. Like, I mean, well, the, landlord, days, you know? the landlord tipped them off. That's what we found mm. out later, because the landlord lived adjacent to this rented building. And the landlord saw all the I mean, the drag queens in those days were notorious. I mean, strapless evening gown, tits hanging out, blonde hair, Rita Hayworth. We had Marilyn Monroe. Mm. We had Hedy Lamar. We had Greta Garbo. We had Ingrid Bergman. We had everybody. Every queen was a star. Not like today where they're all clowns. They're comic queens. Back then, we imitated and imperson impersonated a movie star. So you right. saw all of these way out dressers i mean for the day it was in my day if you dressed the way you did they definitely would have said the poor poor thing look at him he's not all there oh that poor poor guy <laughs> well you just said that earlier so it's changed no no i said i said that with love just i kidding. said that with love. i'm totally kidding i love when you said, said it, it but i know I what you said, mean i said it with respect because anybody of course, that has that. the audacity to do what you do deserves a big hug and a kiss Oh, because, I like it, you back. No, because the world is too full of people who want to conform us to people we don't want to be, and everyone mm -hmm. should be. I hate going right. to bands. I know that you. And, and, that, and that's what we're saying. We, oh, Richie says all the time, it's not just Wait, queens. It's teens, about it's this girl. It's question supermodels. Me. It's everyone. Let's go back to your makeup. What makes your makeup different than anybody else's? Well, that we're doing a beauty queen. Well, the fun well, thing is, everybody's invited. So, like, it's every every makeup brand, like. Everything like boom, boom, and and yeah, it's like it's like a party, like like uh, it's a metaverse of makeup madness, and just everyone's invited. I mean, right now I'm wearing Jeffrey Star, I'm wearing Mac, I'm wearing Nars, I'm wearing Charlotte Tilbury. It, it's like a potpourri of boom. And, so, I mean, and I have one, I have one beauty queen secret on my face right now that Ooh, isn't tell us, around yet. It's coming, it's coming a little later in the spring. So try to get. Um, yeah, I mean, our our product, is? Ron, is really. The, the, our product is simple. Our product is the conversation around makeup and pop culture and fashion and style and what everyone wants to do and who they want to be. And that's what really we're putting out there right now. And that's what it's all about. There isn't okay, a place so for that. Wait, 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 wait. For, for us brain dead old fucks, yeah. t tell us again the name and how are you priced? No, no, you're not Richie? following it. We, not following yeah, we have a great answer for you. Richie will tell okay. you the price right now. Go, Richie. Well, the best oh. price is it's free. It's free to join. Yes. So join and it's dreaming, streaming 24 seven, like boom, it's content of fun. And it's not one type of content. I mean, it's all over the place. Like we're excited. Like tomorrow, this girl that we met, it's amazing. Became like our it girl, like you're going to love her. And her name's um, Kylan and Kanani. And we're going to uh, Larry Namers, his best friend, Claudia, um, uh, Will's that she was in Back to the Future, and she's, well, she's a very amazing. good friend of ours. She's a good friend of you ours. You know, I thought I figured I you knew her, and oh, yeah, yeah and like, we're going to her store. Yeah, and we're gonna play dress up and like and do the whole like just fun with with everything. We were there the other day. And we're so, 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 so wait, let me see. No, her I'm, store I'm, is our, her store is Armani Wells. She has Armani Wells, the clothing store. Yes, yes. In Studio I'm, City. I'm lost. I'm being honest. I'm lost. So you do okay. not have your own private makeup line. It's like a circus. It's a com everybody. it's a combination of all the makeups. Now, do you on your show show us how to apply this makeup? Absolutely. Oh, so good. Everybody out there that looks like shit because yep. they don't have to put their fucking makeup <laughs> on. They have to watch And there is show. there is some fun there is some fun merch like fun hats and tees and hoodies and, and the makeup will come like as we as we we just want to get like everybody to have fun with the party and, and as they as they join. Yeah, so yeah there's lot there's lots of tutorials yeah. and there's so much tea as well. Mm -hmm. I love it. So now, guys, I have a problem. Fun. When I work, they want to put all that shit on my face. I tell them do not put any kind of face makeup on because it cracks in my wrinkles and I look like Boris Karloff and I need nine channel leaves, the mummy. What can I do to, to prevent that ugly old man look 
Without it, I look younger. When your minute you put makeup on, you look suddenly aged. What what can I do about that? Well, I've seen you in person. You look amazing. I feel like any anybody who puts any foundation or especially before you put powder on top of it, it's great to mix it with a moisturizer. Like moisturize before you go to sleep. Always even you have the, yeah, even if any of you're drunk, like go to a tipsy, they will say. I agree um, with that. And a lot of water yeah. with the champagne. I mean, look, a, and a great moisturizer always helps. We love I great used moisturizer to, I used... with coconut and uh, yeah. paraben free. But you know what, Ron? We always say. Great. No, I and Richie always... says this all the time. Richie taught this to me. I used to ask him, "Oh my God, that model looks so great, or that supermodel is so amazing." The best looking people in the world, it comes from the inside. And we're not trying to sound cliche or anything. No, it's true. You it's show up true. And you just light up from the inside, then your light shines. Absolutely. If, That's if what you, it's about, if, right? If, if you're sad or depressed, mm -hmm. you don't look good. But if you're happy, if you're yeah. if you just met somebody and you're in that new two months of being in love, my God, no one, no one is more gorgeous. Now I use tinted moisturizer when I work in film, and That's it good. works. It works. Wait, but go back. back. What happens? What happens on the third month? What? What happens, what happens know, on right? the third, third month? month? What happens on the third month? You need to get a highlighter. Of the relationship. You said in the first oh, two months the third of the relationship. Month? Well, yeah, the you, first two you, either, you either bring in a third party or you find somebody new. That's not true. <laughs> well, that's quick. No, he's full of shit. I'm so. only teasing. What happens on the third month? Well, if it's real, it stays. If it's just heat, a heat wave, it goes. I mean, I've been in many three-month love affairs. And then by the fourth and fifth month, when the sex was routine, the partner, eh, the love left. But with this one that I'm married to, this faggot here, this old queen. Oh. I love you two together. I'm only married. I only married him for his money. Yeah. Really, That's I fun. I, it's lasting. I, I, it's lasting. He, 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 hey, we're 10 years into it. Hey, listen, I'm an 81-year-old kept, kept, kept man. That's something to be said about. I love it. You know, so, so, so like, okay, when you're when you're having a little personal question, uh, spoil alert. When you're having a little low, like, say, you know, you're getting a little like argument, like different than what you're doing now, but like a real one. Like, does Jane Russell come out for a little perk in the relationship or anything? Like, you do a little like floor show or anything? Did you do a Jane bitchy, Jane Russell bitchy thing to yeah. me? No, no, he doesn't. No. He's Italian. He doesn't I'm, do that. I, I, I become... Oh, I meant more like, do you sing a song for Jimmy? Oh uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, no. When I'm when I'm mad, can, I be, though. when I'm mad, I become very Cosa Nostra. I become very Italian, very strict, and very tough. Uh, I was born in Brooklyn, raised in Brooklyn. I fought all my yeah, life. Brooklyn. No, physically, I physically had to fight because when I was a kid, they call me fudge pack a faggot, queer. Mm. How come you act like a girl? You know all the usual lovely He's things. He's actually very butch, though. That kids say to us. So I used to beat the shit out of all of them to prove to them that <laughs> whatever they were saying wasn't real. Like I said, I beat this cab driver's face in. Jimmy will tell you, we were at a very big affair in Hollywood, and a guy made a remark about me looking like, what did he say? I oh, like? he said, you look like a Miami Vice faggot. And then he took his finger and post, po poked it in his chest. So I punched so him, he right punched in, the him face. in the face. I beat the <laughs> shit out of him, and I threw him against the wall, and I threw him down a flight of stone stairs. And we got kicked out. And I got kicked out. <laughs> And I'm never allowed back in there again because the next year I went and they said, oh, we remember you. You can't come in here. So there you That's go. That's me to go in drag next time. <laughs> well, you know what? I, to good. I told Jimmy, I said, we have a wonderful club here called Oscars. And yeah. I'm going to talk to the owners and say, I would like to do a one night performance of what a drag show was back in 1960. And yes, I will, do I will it. Re, I will recreate. That would be incredible. No, I'll recreate my act as it was. Of course, the jokes will be corny because back then we couldn't get away with what we get away with now. And I think mm -hmm. it would be interesting for all the new young queens to see what it was like when we worked. I, I don't know. We'll see. So hold That'd on. I want to go back to you guys. Okay. So first of all, Richie, show everybody your hat because that's the Beauty Queen logo, right? Um, yes, babies. All right. So. <laughs> The website for Beauty Queen, you guys, is is btykwn.com. For Beauty Queen, they uh, they have all kinds of cool stuff up there. You sign up for free, um, and then you'll be able to f keep track of everything that they got going on. You guys got to replace all your, like, hoodies and T-shirts and stuff because I went on there, and it says sold out on everything. Oh, my God. It, went, it all went out well, in Japan. Richie Rich, what do you expect? Yeah. Yeah. So now if I watch your show. And I yeah. see a, a rouge or blush, they call it nowadays, a blush that I like. Mm -hmm. I contact you and I purchase the blush from you. Not yet. Sure, I you will. can text mm -hmm. Richie Rich directly if you mm -hmm. want. 
Yeah, you, well, you, yeah, hello. I mean, how, how are you guys going to make money? Do they come to Berlin? Berlin. Jimmy Ronsters is asked to Berlin. I just sang in Berlin in July. I sang one of my tracks. Like I sing as well for fun. Um, uh, hi, Jimmy. Um, no, we more like talk about other makeup brands we love, and then Beauty Queen's going to come out the, our makeup line, and that you can get on on BeautyQueen.com coming up. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, the hoodies us, and hats are back this week. Yeah, we're selling merchandise right now for our citizens, what everyone in our community is called. But for us, it's really about you know, Richie wanted to do something that really. Uh, contributed to leaving a legacy behind. He has pieces in the museum. Okay. He has fashion at people's homes. Actually, we were talking to someone, a very famous dancer, ballerina, uh, prima ballerina, that has a whole collection of Richie's designs that are stored away in her home and wanted to leave a legacy. And Richie thought that the best way to do that is start with these kids first. And anyone that's young at heart, of course, right? We all consider ourselves kids, right? Right. Yeah. Now, if I'm and another, so that's what yeah. this is all about. Kids are at kids are, are, are every age. Okay. So, now, if I'm a woman, and I watch your show. Can I ask you to put together a line of cosmetics for me to look pretty? You mean pick what is yeah. the best product for you? Yeah. In other words, you you we're gonna oh, go absolutely. Back. Gonna, I'm going to be yeah. on Skype, so you're going to see the ugly old broad, right? And you're going to tell her what she needs to look decent or pretty. And nobody's could, ugly. Everyone looks the way they want to look. And that's feels bullshit. They that, feel. that's, that's bullshit. I know a couple of dogs, please. <laughs> but Richie has oh, gone out. That. Richie and I have gone around the world virtually, based on the way the world is now. We would have loved to have been on planes. He went to a couple cities um, out of the country, but we went around the world and casted who we thought were the most emerging talents in the makeup space that know everything and everything about makeup. I mean, you can even mention something from Max Factor or just show a color and they'll say Max Factor 1976. I mean, it's quite fascinating. And they range in ages. They're from Dublin, they're from London. They're from, like Richie said, Louisiana, Brooklyn, from everywhere. And we have around a dozen or so of these emerging young talents that are all about the whole DIY aesthetic. And Richie feels that they have the eye that can then someday soon they can leave their own legacy behind. And so they're there to help you, to guide you of what to wear and how to wear it and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, so for, yes. those of, for those of you out there who are vague as I am about exactly what this show is like, I would suggest as I will go in and look, that all of you go in and look, and I'm sure there's something that they do that will interest you because it sounds like a big potpourri of good stuff. It actually it's is. It's fun. And it's for everybody. I mean, it literally is no. like, it's global, it's fun, it's it's just, uh, and, and we would love you. I mean, help. No, we'll, when you do I'll Oscars, we're gonna come, we're gonna come cover push. that show. Boom. <laughs> No, I definitely, so basically, I definitely will push your show. I so will you push guys, it, so basically, like it. you guys, like it's, you a, it, it's it's a gathering place for people to talk about makeup, um, makeup in fashion with new things coming that'll be your own, um, and it's all through the eyes of an icon, Richie Rich and Mr. Absolutely. D. Um, yeah. So I think it's very and, and, cool. And, 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 and you and just makeup, launched Jimmy. two days ago, right? Or three days? Yes. You just launched like three days ago. What is it? That's it's like rolling out country by country. Days ago. Oh. Yes. And then the great thing about it is that, as Richie always says, and he can tell you right now, the makeup is just a conversation starter, like being at a great cocktail party. Once you start talking about the makeup, then it leads to all these other things, whether it be personal it. issues or fascinating things. Thank you. So, you know, the red carpet, Larry Namer, who was one of the founders of E! Entertainment, um, him and his co-founder, Alan, is chief advisor of the project for us. And he's such an inspiration and mentor to both Richie and myself. And they became really well known, really famous around the world for doing that red carpet where Joan Rivers would say, what are you wearing? Well, we're kind of turning the tables now. And Richie's now saying to everyone on the red carpet, what are you wearing on your face? It's never been done before. And Richie's going to do that and pave the trail. Fabulous idea, it. because you know what? So many young people look at the movie stars and say, oh, they're so beautiful. I wonder how they do that. Well, now you guys can tell them how to True. apply, what to buy. And how to look. It's, it's a And you'd be surprised of the answers. We've heard some unbelievably amazing love, answers love, that you least expected. I love, mm -hmm. I love what you're doing. Let's give a shout wait, out wait to Wait one minute. I see so many women who have their makeup on incorrectly and they look like shit. Don't you see them? I mean, some of them really wear the wrong colors, the, uh, the wrong lipstick shades. It's awful. So I believe that, yes, we need to educate the new, the young. And you guys are going to do it. Boom. And you're going to be there with us. We want you part of it. We definitely yeah, want you. I, I, I will promote your show because I really believe in it. So I will talk about it when I go out in crowds of people, and I will tell friends of mine who really need help. I won't name there's them, a, but there's a few. That there's an amazing. Help. 
amazing girl. I'm going to text you about her. I'm, we want to get her on the beauty queen and you'll love her. She she's here in LA and she does, um, uh, her show is all about what Marilyn Monroe wore, all her makeup products, uh, Elizabeth Taylor, what she wore. Maybe um, we know her. What's her name? And, um, you know what? I, I know her name, but I gotta look, I have to look no, at her. I don't remember. YouTube. I feel horrible. Like, no, that sounds so bad. I just she just resonated in my mind. I just watched. But why, while like, you're talking, let's give a shout out to Larry Namer because Larry Namer is a big supporter. Oh my God, Larry! Of so what's up? Yes, Larry? Larry's one of the first. Hey, Larry. We, we met our very first red carpet that we ever came to when we moved here. Back oh. here, Ron moved back here, but when we moved here, yeah. he was one of the very first people we met in a VIP, you know, room, and Good he was Larry. super cool. And so he's very cool. Very hey, Larry cool guy. is a nice fella. We like Larry him. is perpetually I mean, in the VIP room all yes. the time. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean. Hollywood, Hollywood needs to have the VIP you know, room. Bow down to Larry for that, of course. Like, like everything, like he. Brought that's what to, it's like, about. It's about being open minded world. and just and just being yourself. Also, when things so. open up and get better, Richie's going to, of course, get back on the runway and do some amazing runway oh, yeah. shows. Maybe Ron, that, you could uh, get on I that wanna, runway and walk it down for. Yeah, Richie. we'd love to have you, know, you on. You know, I, I would love to be at the. I love you know when I lived in New York, the Waldorf Astoria. I think it was, I forgot what day it was, maybe Sunday afternoon, always had a fabulous designer do a runway show. And my friend, Perry, my friend Perry and I used to go. You had champagne and oh, so elegant. Those days were breathtaking. Today it sucks. But yeah. those days you had little hors d'oeuvres and champagne and you sat and you watched the most incredible Oscar de la Renta. I mean, Givenchy, the designers, yeah, the that, gowns. That. Oh my God, you could drop dead. My friend Perry used to say, I, Ronald, a darling, I'm loving every He's Jewish. I, Ronald, a darling, <laughs> I'm loving everyone. So I said, well, go out and marry another guy, Richard, this time, and you can afford those dresses. So uh, <laughs> now I want to talk a little bit. So so when we were in New York, before we moved to Palm Springs, right before we moved to Palm Springs, Ron actually, for Fashion Week, did uh, uh, an underwear fashion show for underwear and modeled underwear. And everybody was, was like 20, and he was like I was 78. Se I love it. I was 78 years old, and I and this is what they did. By mistake, they got me a small. They didn't do it by mistake. Well, they didn't, but I'm a large. <laughs> And not, not to brag, but nature was good to me. Too good in, in a sense. The pillow or a real story? Well, the real thing. <laughs> you went there before. And the guy, and the guy that Kidding. ran it looked at me in my little brief. He said, does that thing work? <laughs> I said, yes. So I knew right away I was in trouble. But, but it was fun. I walked the runway. I had on knee-high leather boots and uh, a, very, a very brief bikini underwear. And Oh, I'm, 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 we're Googling this on YouTube. You know that. <laughs> no, really. And I was among I all have pictures these I can send. gorgeous, strappy, beautiful, built young men. And here came this old queen. And I got the best applause of all of them. And people stood up and started cheering. They said, look at that old fuck. He had the balls to get put that bathing suit on and walk. <laughs> Underwear. Underwear. So, I'm sure they said. It was I fun, live. though. So That's amazing. So you, so how did you get into this whole thing? I know you were a club yeah, I kid. I have to plug them. It was cock sock. Oh yeah, cock socks. So uh, I, no, it I, wasn't cock socks. It was cock socks. No, it was Uniglo. <laughs> cock socks gave us free things because we advertised. Oh, I love Uniglo. They're free. fun. Yeah. Um. So how did you? Because I, I, cause, so you're a famous club kid, and how did you? How did you decide? Okay, I'm going to be like a, a fashion. I love like the icon. both of you. I wish we could have four hours. Of we love you. <laughs> oh, before I, I didn't say that, because I, I felt I had like I had like a, a little glitter freeze in my head, like like too much ice cream. You know that feeling. Um, her name is Laura Jane Atelier. That's her YouTube, and she goes over Laura, like what I don't think all the old. Her. Oh, you have to check her out. What all the old stars like the the legends wore. Like we will check um, it really out. Is she is it. she on Melrose? Um, I'm not sure where she is, but she's she's based in LA. I know that she's probably on Melrose. All right, we'll look it up. So tell me, how did you decide I'm going to be a fashion icon? Um, I, well, I I, just, I mean, thank you, but uh, no, it was just since I I sat in high school, like just dreaming of back to the dreaming, and then the fight. Uh, it just naturally came to me. Like I was a figure skater. My mom would design what I was wearing for like uh, so for my competitions. Then I joined the ice capades. I hung out in the costume department, and then met Mr. D and it just the word organic is so overused but it's true it just I dressed my friends I had fun and then it was just like so on and so on and just it wasn't like oh I'm gonna be a fashion designer it was more just kind of oh, very organic when you were skating, called. when you were skating mm -hmm. did you ever meet a skater by the name of Bobby Gennard I know or Bobby yeah, I know Bobby Gennard yeah 
He was my very yes. best friend. And Dick Really? Button, yeah, because my daughter Oh, I sat with I sat I sat at dinner with Dick Button at a benefit in Chelsea Piers for the skating um council like and yeah. he was telling me the best stories and I was like oh. I mean that Bobby uh, many people I've met, I I don't get starstruck much, but with him, I, I have to tell him. I, Bobby, I Denard, <laughs> Bobby Denard's best story was they were in Mexico and they were eating Mexican food, which they shouldn't have done. And Sonia Henney was the star of the show. Wow. And it was the winter wonderland and everybody was in white. And the whole set was all white. Oh, God, I know where this story is going. <laughs> well, the Adagio pair, she had uh, diarrhea. And when he lifted her up and spun her around, the diarrhea hit Sonia Henny and all of the white stuff. Yum. That's a true story. And I love oh, I believe when, you. When Bobby used to tell that story, I over and over again I would laugh and laugh and laugh because it's a picture. So, so Mr. D, I want to give you some props too, though, then because basically a lot of the brands that a lot of the brands that 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 were super duper popular, nobody would have even known about them if it wasn't for you. So you have to have mad skills. Mm -hmm. Uh, to be able to do that. So number one, I want to congratulate you on, on that. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how beauty queen just blows up all over the planet. Yeah, what's the number one selling makeup line box. Isn't it box? Oh, Mac max box crash, crash box or something. Smash box. Smash box. There, there's so many right now. It's a, it's a big marketplace. It's a big thing and everyone loves makeup. And now as guys or people that don't define themselves as guys, as they or them, or whatever they define themselves as, are now getting into buying that stuff. It's just becoming a bigger and bigger space. Um, you know, for me growing up, getting into it, I'll tell you, Jim, is things like what you were trying to ask. I saw everything as entertainment. I think that's why Richie and I get along so well. I mean, he took the runway and turned it into a Hollywood studio, walking all these unbelievably famous stars down it and, and changed the game for everyone. Changed the game for everyone. And I was so into what he was doing. And it goes back to what you're saying, not just about being organic, Richie, when you were young, but being independent having a sure. fierce sense of independence in yourself and believing in yourself. So many people don't believe in themselves. And Richie and I talk to so many people when we lecture at schools or campuses or virtually in different seminars we do, you know, just believe in yourself. Why can't I do this? There's no, why can't go do it, you know, go do it at the, any the, level. The people you're describing listen to other people. In order to be yourself, you must never, never listen to anyone because they're going to be jealous, envious, or stupid, and they're going to give you the wrong advice. Just do what you feel is in your soul and in your heart. You'll never go wrong. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and you'll see that this group so that we have, we've assembled under Richie called the Glam Gang, and Richie's put together this group of some of the most amazing young and aspiring and emerging and well-known, Kevin Aviance, a complete legend in the New York Hollywood scene will be the MC of everything. Desmond is amazing. A young wonder kid, an advocate for so many different causes will be there. Kylan Kalani, um, the list goes on and on. The only Eden, the only Eden, she grew up in Louisiana and literally could not go outside her house during the pandemic because it was so bad to go and wear a dress, whatever it might be. So we flew her out to Los Angeles. We met her a few days ago. We put her on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And she said to Richie, and this is a testament to Richie and how he's so amazing. For Richie, it's never about ego. It's always about dreaming. And the only Eden looked at Richie and said, okay, what do you want me to do? And Richie said, whatever you want, just do it. Yeah. And we'll roll the tape. And that was it. And that was Rick, it. Rick, that's what you Rick, guys, Rick, that's Rick, what Rick. you guys were doing on New Year's Eve too. You were like walking around with the phone and just taping all kinds of cool stuff. Which was Richie, I, Richie, this is for you. I don't, I don't know how old you are, but Maybe you've mm -hmm. heard of the legend, Pat Michaels. Pat Michaels used to have a big rubber stamp, and she would walk on the corner of Third Avenue all over and stamp her name. She was the first sex change that we knew way back in 1966, 67. And I remember- I know. You knew Pat, uh, of Pat I, I never. Oh, I did never met her, I wish. Um, but I know of her. I mean, I, I, I'm enthralled by everything in, in the community, pop culture, everything. Like, I mean, thank God for, for her. Like, but you knew her? Oh, absolutely. She was a good friend of ours. We were taking wow. a taxi cab from uptown to go down to Dirty Dick's, which was Richard's uh, gay bar down in the village. And the cab driver was kidding around. And he said she was a man and she got offended. She said, I'm not a man. I'm a woman. He said, come on, you're a man. So she proceeded to open her legs, pull down her panties and show him that she was a woman. And he said, oh, come on, you guys. That's rubber. You put them on. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's Ooh. how people that's how people couldn't understand how a man could become a woman. It was so Yeah, like, I mean it's revolutionary, things. especially then. Now, yeah, oh my gosh. Do you do you know Philip Block? Like we're friends. Yes, with I love Philip. I he was on great. the he was on the show not too Phillip. long ago. Of course, I love. Oh, we Phillip. love Philip. I figured you would because you, he's an icon too. <laughs> yeah, we, oh, we have, yeah. all, we, all fashion we, weeks and everything fun. We so, have a lot of oh, friends yeah. that have changed. We have a lot of change friends. Lots. Yeah. So who? Yeah. So you know, you, you, when I moved, oh, sorry, when I moved to back to those kind of like um, idols, like back to um, uh, when I first moved to New York, Quentin Crisp was my next door neighbor, oh, which is really cool in the East Village. Quentin was my dearest friends. I have wow. an interview. He was in our. I did a. I used to do drag shows for Elizabeth Taylor Foundation for AIDS research and Amphar, mm. and I raised a lot of money through drag shows with drag queens. And Quentin, Quentin came in one of our shows, and he said that uh, he came to America because he had to do the jobs that the Americans didn't want to do. I wow. knew Quentin. He was an eccentric guy. He lived in that famous hotel in this little room filled with books and scripts and papers and he was probably one of the most interesting fellas and he started doing what you are today he was really mm -hmm. the birth he's the birth father i mean oh, he, was, he he trailed he trailed that 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 path for sure he was beaten up put in jail raped raped horribly in jail i mean he was his his stories were i really should write a book people want me to write a book the more i think about oh it, my gosh you have well to. only because i'd like to write the stories that quentin told us uh, us young we were all like 19 and 20 and quentin was in, educating us on what gay was back in 1933 and 4. it was horrible how gay people were treated they talk about the slaves the slaves were treated better than us i mean we were constantly Crazy. beaten and 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 abused and thrown out of apartments and fired from our jobs humiliated in the street people would walk by you and say you fags i mean for no reason what what do we do all right one time yeah. we left pam pams on third avenue and somebody threw a bunch of pocketbooks out in the garbage so we all grabbed the pocketbook and decided to walk down third avenue as camp of course that's well, what we do hello so real, you had real to quick. hear the people how they insulted us it was terrible no real, it's crazy real quick thank god Never. for you hello yeah, he's been he's he's been on the forefront. Oh, Don, I just everything. I noticed you earlier. Don asked if we know Laganja Estrada. We love her. Like, yeah, a good friend. Of course. I just saw Laganja in New York a couple of years ago. But, uh, she was doing a TV show like at this theater. Like I was visiting my friends and like Laganja. Who, we who are we talking about? Uh, Laganja Estrada from Drag Race. Like, boom. Oh, oh. I just saw a comment. Like, so yeah. So we also, we love Philip Block. We're gonna get, try to get Philip Block on. There's so many amazing. Oh yeah. Pat Fields, legendary Pat Fields. That's been such a mental oh, to Richie as well. Yeah, she's myself. fabulous. Great Pat Fields doing all the amazing wardrobe on Emily in Paris, which you've been watching. Uh, oh, we love last, Emily in Paris. So last, also, the last few nights. Um, also, uh, so I have one more shout out. Say hi to Twyla because she was another part of my crew the other night who met you. Was hi, happy. Twyla. Um, hey, Twyla. And also then, Diane, so uh, Diane introduced us to, oh my God, now I forgot. The Back to the Future, Claudia Wells. So that we yeah. actually met Claudia Wells through Diane, uh, and she actually came to Sue's party the one before. We invited her for New Year's Eve, but she couldn't make it. But you're going to have a great fabulous. time with her because she's fabulous. Oh, yeah. That'll be great. Like, in, 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 in memorandum, I want to use names of the greatest drag queens of the 1950s who started Ooh. the elegant drag, Daisy D, Tish. Ooh. Um the one that she was gorgeous she, uh, the, Salome Salome they all worked at the club 82 which was the best drag club in the world wow, wow. Lynn, we Lynn, gotta we gotta get you on Ron with Kevin Aviance the, well, the iconic oh legendary Kevin Aviance yeah. uh, how about Kevin Lynn? has a show on Beauty Queen you Lynn, should really start Lynn talking G, to Kevin Lynn G was a fabulous queen and my very 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 dear dear friend who's Mickey Miss Mickey uh, she did Rita Hayworth like nobody's business. Ooh, God, timeline. she did Gilda. She did the what? Who put the blame on Mame? Oh my God! My love. God, she got standing of we all straight clubs. She got standing ovations. I swore it was Rita Hayworth. I swore love. it. And then of course we had Sugar, a candy darling, who was the first one oh to God. have silicone put in her breast. Candy darling, candy darling is everything. Like she Warhol died from it. She died from the silicone mm. in her breast. But Candy Darling was far more beautiful than Marilyn Monroe. She so here's a question for you, Ron. Here's a question. Good. Let's turn the tables for a second. Um, Richie and I want to know if you guys could be 
any piece of makeup, what would you be? What makeup would you be? Ooh. If I could be a piece of makeup, what piece of lipstick? Lips without lipstick, you're not. That's right. mine. How dare you? Yeah. You stole no, it right Mine too. No, no, no. It's lipstick. I, was, I mean, does glitter, does glitter count with lipstick? I have lipstick. <laughs> lipstick could be the piece of makeup. I'll take the glitter. You, then. you can go bare face. Nope. You, you can have a washed face, but if you have lipstick on, you're dressed. It's lipstick, lipstick. Li without lipstick, you know, my mother would never go out of the house without there lipstick. There he is. By the way, everybody loved your uh, your mirror that you had the other night too. That big gold mirror. Oh uh, my God! Thank you, like, you around. <laughs> that was like, fun. D got me that. We went to Jeffrey Star's headquarters. It was so sweet and such and a cool mirror. Yeah. Yeah, that was you awesome. gotta like love it. I so you guys listen up. We I couldn't go. get over that heavy necklace you had on. I kept lifting it. I even showed Su Wong. I said it's beautiful. <laughs> what the hell? How, that how, where'd you get that necklace? That's quite a necklace. It was this oh, big big fun. plate, a big big plate with diamonds in it, and it went that was around. fun. Actually, um, our good friend Lindsay Risk made it. She has this beautiful boutique gallery in Brooklyn in Bushwick called Risk Gallery. And that was, yeah, that was a gift. Beautiful like, so much piece. Fun. Beautiful. When I, it's funny when she gave it to me. I thought it was um, a visor. And it, right. it, it's how, it's it's a, it looked change. like a It looked like a visor. But it, it, I was like, this is, is this for a baby? I mean, I'm a baby <laughs> at heart. But I'm like, okay, so. and she's like, she goes, full girl. She goes, queen, it's for your neck. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys, Richie, Richie. I, I, I thought it was a skirt, actually. When I saw it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys. <laughs> Richie, Richie, Mr. Puppy. Richie, Richie, Mr. D. I've just gotten back on Instagram. You can follow Richie under Really Richie Rich. It's uh, R E A L L Y R I C H I E R I C H. Mr. D is Mr. D World. Just the letter D. Yes, brand new um, accounts. We started fresh and so clean for the And it's year. uh, I know. And Richie's got thirteen thousand followers already. He just started it. That's unbelievable to me. <laughs> yeah, started um, so like you three guys, minutes ago. <laughs> so you guys too go to bt beautyqueen.com, b t y k w n dot com. We'll bring you guys back. We got to go because we got another guest, but. Yeah. Yes, no, we don't want to go. We feel so privileged to be here. Yeah, we want to be back one day. Listen, 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 so. listen, listen you, okay. guys, you guys are family. Remember that. We're doing family. we're doing Palm Springs. We're doing we're doing a show at Oscars. And yes, we love to be in your family because you're family too, right, Mr. D? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We should all just grab some dinner while we're here in town. Absolutely. Um, we'll come in yeah, to go to dinner. We'll come in. We're, we're going and Larry to, and Larry and Larry to, says is Oh, sorry. Larry sends his hey, 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 and and much hey, much happier. Anyway, we're going to Genghis Khan with us uh, with Su Wong in a couple of weeks. So Ooh, we'll call you. Okay. We'll, okay. Food's delicious. Yeah. Day. You ever have ever eat it at Genghis Khan? It's no, Chinese we can't wait. Chinese, Chinese, Chinese Jew, yes. Jewish, Jewish, Chinese. It's delicious. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> Fabulous. All right, you guys. Best we'll of be luck there. with Beauty Happy Queen. New Year. Oh, thank you. We love your show. Thank, thank you for having you us on today. All right, you guys. Happy Good luck. Love you. So bye happy bye. to be here with you talking. Bye -bye. And bye, everybody. Thank you for listening and watching. Yay. And keep drinking. <laughs> All right, what you guys. A, you know, they are so cool because they are outrageous and they're really doing something for people. And I like people that do things for other people, not for themselves. So real quick, you guys, we're going to take a quick music video break and then we're going to bring on our next guest, Jay Edwards. Um, let's play the Young Zuck thing because I want to play him. Young Zuck's a hip hop guy. We met at Sue Wong's and I, I really think he's like freaking like awesome. The name of the song is Overseas. Hopefully you guys will like it and then we'll be on with Jay Edwards. Enjoy. Take a flight and we going overseas. I'm a from overseas. Rock, rock and Louis V. I got plenty of money and bitches they on me. I'm a fly turn young and I be starting rolling. She be acting like she know me, but bitch that's the old me. Yeah. Cut you off quick. I'm so tired of that faking and capping. That bitch be all up on my dick, but I can't for no average. My new girl know that she the shit. Swear to God she the best. We gon' pull up, drop and quit. Tell them what's in the head. I count a 40, 50. That bitch said she love me, she rolling with me. I've been on my grind, I'ma go and get it. Catch me out of time now. Post it with a Take a flight and we going overseas. I'm a overseas. I'm rock, rock, Louis V. I got plenty of money and bitches they on me. I'm a fly turn young and I'm just gonna roll it. She be acting like she know me, but bitch that's the old me. Yeah, yeah. First class, you know how we roll through. Got designer on my jeans with the hoes too. Yeah, I take it back, drop it. 
for the all you know everything I want, baby. I just bought a brand new. I got the ones, the twos, the threes, and the fours. Hop, hop out the way with a suicide door. Yeah, I made the crowd scream, different city world tour. Yeah, I gotta have it all, but I really want more. I was new, yeah, you see me on the news. Wanna take a picture? I don't wanna take it too. Say I'm Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? Some months, I make 200 to 300 bucks. <laughs> Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code MONEY for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill-up. You can cash out anytime to PayPal or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code MONEY for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code MONEY. Looking fresh on the flyest in the room Me and Mari taking off, we gon' meet you at the drum Overseas, rockin' Louis V at home Hey, kicks wanna kick it low-key Yeah, shorty bust down, slim thick in them jeans I'm gonna take a flight and we goin' overseas I'm from overseas, rockin' Louis V I got plenty money and bitches they on me I'm a fly, turn young and I be starting to roll me She be actin' like she know me, but bitch, that's the old me Yeah, yeah Yo, overseas We out in this bitch right now Yeah, yeah, and we're back, everybody. That was Young Zuck, and he's the coolest kid I met. And I'm you're gonna hear it here because all kinds of people we bring on the show, and uh, like two years later, they're like mad famous. That's gonna be one of them. I like the music. The he's, words we know not necessary. He's gonna but be the music was good. He's gonna be mad famous, you guys. I'm telling you, just mark my words. You heard it here first. Now we're gonna bring on our next guest, Jay Edwards. Let's see what we can do for you. Hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh, I love it. He's like Leland. How about yeah, that? We there? Yeah, he is kind of like Leland. Hey, Jimmy, look, Ron. Look at, the, look at the beard on you. How y'all doing? You're Good. like our friend Leland. <laughs> Do you know Leland Squar? Leland Squar? Yeah, yeah, we love oh, him. Oh, I've been, yeah, I know of him. I never got to meet him, but uh, to meet him, but I, uh, I know of him. Get a lot of people saying, hey, you look like Leland Sklar. You yeah, do. Yeah, he's a really good friend of and ours. And that's a compliment because he's the nicest cool. guy in the world. And I can introduce you to him. He's like a really good friend okay. of ours. Yep. <laughs> And so, a hell of a drum. So hold on, let me let me do an uh, let no, me do an intro. What is no, do? he's a bass player. Bass player. Bass, bass player. player. We know all the drummers too. Hold on, let me do a good intro for you. All right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Now that was terrible. I messed up it up. I've got to do it again. <laughs> Let's do it again. All right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, Nashville's best kept music secret. Jay Edwards. Hello and welcome to the show. Hey, Why buddy. Not? How y'all doing, man? We're good. Good. I, I, I want to try that opening. Okay. Hey, everybody. <laughs> welcome to the Ron Russell show that Jimmy's no longer on. Yeah, that's not nice. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> so we have a chat room full of people. Say hi to everybody in the chat room. You. you. Hey, hey, how y'all doing? There you go. And then we got, this is my co cool, outrageous co-host, Ron Russell. Hey, how you doing? You're going to be interesting, I could tell. Oh, okay. There we go. Well, anybody that I'm wears not... a beard like that's got to be interesting. <laughs> well, that's that's a part of the funny story is that I I've done music all my life and played uh, forever and in every instrument. And uh, about five years ago, four years ago, I started growing this beard. Within a year, I ended up with a couple of guys from a company called Honest Amish, and uh, they said, "Hey, who does your beard product?" I said, "I don't know," and. Uh, before I had any music endorsements, I had a beard endorsement. <laughs> Good for you. Good now, for you. I, I want to yeah. ask you a question. I okay. eat now. When I eat, I really have food all over my shirt and chin. Do you do you get food in that beard? Oh, all the time, all the time. I just so it's like, just it's found like a some snack. rice from like, lunch. <laughs> right. It's like a snack for later on. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now I hear you have a, ver a very British accent. <laughs> now, where you Where are you from in the South? Let me guess, Tennessee. 
Uh, I live in Tennessee now, but no, not uh, not originally. Sounds like a Tennessee accent to me. Where are you from? Just the other side. I was born in uh, northeastern Arkansas and raised in South Arkansas, northeastern Louisiana. Okay, now I El, El Dorado, El Dorado, Arkansas. Yeah, now now you're sounding different. You switch gears. <laughs> See, now you went back to your original accent. You know, hey, so living in California, you know, I I have a Brooklyn accent, and every now and then I come out with some stupid California sound, <laughs> and I get embarrassed. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> So, yeah, Actually, the, the New York thing was there. I could hear it. Yeah, I'm uh, never going to get rid of it either. I do love me a, it. Do me a favor. Give a shout out to Dawn. So Dawn has a husband who has a beard like you. She's in the chat room. Just say, hey, Dawn, how you doing? Oh, hey, Dawn, how you doing? <laughs> how you going? <laughs> uh, we have really, we have some of the greatest, like, people who listen to our show. I don't like to call them friends. The fans are really like friends, but we have friends. some phenomenal we, friends. We don't have fans. Who, we like, watch friends. our show, and uh, we like to bring them on. So you guys can follow Jay Edwards. He's on Instagram. He's at Jay Edwards underscore music. And his uh, website is jedwardsmusic.net. Um, so tell us. So here I wrote some little notes down that you were okay. born in Arkansas, that your father was a Pentecostal evangelist. Wow, your family that's traveled heavy. around the Woo. country performing in churches, that you're influenced by, by blues, R&B, classic and country music from the 70s and 80s. Who are some of the people that you like, like would consider an influence? Uh, if you're talking country, you go back to T. Graham Brown, T.G. Shepard. Um, I, I can remember when take this job and shove it came out with Johnny paycheck. I mean, that's, Oh my gosh. Know, so, um, if you're talking the soul music and, uh, and blues, of course, the Reverend Al Green, we'd have to be, he's right there at the top and, and the Clapton, uh, there's so many of them, man. It, it goes, goes uh, on and on the, the influences going back in the gospel, um, man, Andre Crouch and the disciples. Anybody? See, I've never even heard of that one. Have you ever oh, heard of that? One? No. I have no idea what that kidding? is. Oh, happy day! Oh, oh yeah, I know that. Day. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there I just didn't go. know who sang it, but everybody like knows the song. Man, there you go. I love yeah. that. Yeah, man, How do you like living in Tennessee? I I like it. Um, you know, now Tennessee and Nashville, a little two different worlds, but um, and Nashville goes up and down, and it's 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 always going through changes right now we're in in a really really weird um real place in in nashville and um it's you know you can show up two days later you got a job playing music and doing things here in nashville it's nothing uh that that old music community is just kind of gone but maybe it'll come back i'm we're hoping it does we're hoping we know so. so many people that have moved to tennessee Mm -hmm. And to Atlanta and Tennessee, Hollywood right. is no longer Hollywood. Now Atlanta is happening. And most pe we have such an evacuation of people leaving California. It's amazing how many every day in the 100,000 or in a month or something. Right. I mean, we should have good real estate. Then everything should be <laughs> up. Everything prices should go down, right? Right. Well, there. Yeah, it's the same thing here. The the people that, you know, that I grew up or, or came, I came to town in about 2009. And so. A lot of those folks have just said, forget it. And they're, they've moved somewhere else. Uh, out of California. No, out of Tennessee. Uh, out of Tennessee. That, that thing. Yeah, yeah, out of Nashville. I understand. Oh, out of Tennessee. The, but um, the real estate has gone yeah, up in Tennessee but, from a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. I just bought a house last November and, and a year ago, and it's outrageous. Because I remember friends of mine looked about 10 years ago and they said, oh, my God, beautiful homes for like 150,000. Those days are gone. Gone. Way gone. Way gone. Yeah. I live I actually, out of, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, well, I read, a, I read an article uh, about you um, and people compared your singing as a cross between Chris Stapleton and Bob Seger. And your answer was, I'm way older than Chris Stapleton and I'm almost <laughs> as old as Bob Seger. And I've been singing like this since I was like 12 or something. Yeah. You know, uh, dad was a the evangelist. Mom played an accordion or, or organ if they had it in the church. But if not, we carried an accordion with us. Dad played an old flat top guitar. Um, yeah, I've been singing like this since I was old enough to stand on the platform and hold a microphone. And uh, the uh, you know being twelve years old and getting them all romping and stomping, you know, here comes Jesus. Yeah, let's go. And, and <laughs> I don't I don't know uh, if we had that song, but it, that's kind of what 
It felt Are you like going to sing for us today? Uh, I I didn't didn't know if that was um, that was okay or not. So, yeah, no, uh, I'd love to it hear. It is you. okay. I also Are you kidding. Are you I, serious? I also uh, downloaded in case uh, if you ain't leaving me, I downloaded like a video that we could play. But if you want to, if you're okay singing live, we're, we're, I, we'd love I to like hear the it. live better. Oh, yeah. it's, it's intimate. It's like he's doing a show for us. I like our dog is barking. Oh, I right. hear. <laughs> You gotta like love it. What song are you singing? First of all, Wait, what are you gonna sing for us? Um, man, let's see. We'll just run through. There's so many of them. But did um, you write this song, or is it somebody else's? Yeah. Song? I... You froze. Oh no, he froze. I've only go. done the songs that I write, and yeah, I only only sing the songs that I write, and it's not okay. because of any major cuts or anything. It's just tell us about the song wanna... before. Tell us about the um, song before you sing it. Give us some history. Uh, let's see. This is, um, we'll do the, uh, the, I ain't broken was the first, um, first cut off of the, uh, the cold album. And, uh, it's just, just kind of a working man's, um, uh, song working man's blues. And, uh, but it's, it says, uh, I'm tired and broke, but I ain't broken. So. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> I really like that uh, title. That's a good title. Oh, cool. I hope this will work. Let's see. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. I've been laid off, but I ain't laying around. Been working like a dog, giving my all since the plan shut down. It ain't easy. Picking up pieces, there's a piece of me that still believes things happen for a reason. Throw my last five in the plate at church, well, I hope that works. This ain't my first time making diamonds, spending dollars. Well, a little dirt never heard this whole blue collar. I brush off the dust when things get tough. It's how the tough keep going. Tired and broke, but I ain't broken. I ain't broken. Sometimes a long shot is your best bet. Because there's a hunger inside you can only find in folks that ain't made it yet. I feel overdrawn and know I'm past due. I ain't never been a man to fold a bad hand because I'm too afraid to lose. I'm banging on luck and I'm making change. We're counting on faith. This ain't my first time making down and spending dollars. Well, a little dirt never hurt the soul blue collar. I brush off the dust when things get tough. It's how the tough keep going. Tired and broke, but I ain't broken. Yes, I'm tired and broke, but I ain't broken. Well, I'm tired and broke, but I ain't broken. I ain't broken. Yay! Now, if, black, that black, ain't, black, if that black. ain't country, nothing is country. It's like southern. Boy, soul. oh boy, that was almost like up in the Ozark Mountains. I loved it. I thought I was up, oh, way you. up, up. Yeah, it sounds like something Ozarky to me. Anyway, hey, I'm from yeah. Brooklyn. Anything <laughs> out, of, out of Brooklyn sounds Ozark. That's really good. I love the title. It's a good song. I'd well, like to you. hear that with instrumental behind it. Probably fabulous. Yeah. I'll send you a copy. We will. Yeah. Well, maybe do we have time to play his other one? Oh, we can play it. Yeah, let's play the other one that we have with with instrumental. Okay. The, the no, no, it's not. It's just him playing a guitar, but it's a video. Oh well, this is. Uh, I just liked it a lot because it was so beautiful. And you have one thing I say, and we'll play it in a minute. One thing I want to say is like you have a very distinctive, you know, voice. Like other people don't sound like you. No, I thought he sounded uh, like Willie Nelson. Oh no, I don't think he sounds like. <laughs> well, Willie to me, Nelson. you know, I have a Brooklyn ear, but he sounded like <laughs> Willie Nelson. You know, actually better than Willie Nelson because his voice was more gravel. Than, than Willie's. You have to have a gravel voice to sing country. 
What's like that? Dolly, even Dolly Parton has a, a woman's gravel voice. Let me let me brag a little for you, you guys. So so Jay Edwards, you guys, he shared the stage or open for John Schneider. That's how actually we met John Schneider's publicist. Right. Um, hey Barry, let's say hi to Barry. Oh um, yeah, hey. Uh, he's also uh, uh, open for shared the stage with Leon Russell, Martha Reeves, the Marshall Tuck, Marshall Tucker, Aaron Lewis, who I actually used to know him. Uh, Aaron Lewis and Blackberry Smoke. So, uh, so like I think it's very cool. You got two latest albums out, Cold and Average Guy. And I heard that uh, Meatloaf is a fan. I read in an article that Meatloaf is a fan <laughs> of yours, and I love Meatloaf. Oh, cool. Yeah, look, uh, we were. I've got a really cool friend named Sean Murphy. Uh, you may have heard of her. She played and sang with everybody from Eric Clapton to Bruce Hornsby. Um, she was, she was, and still is Bob's. Oh no, he froze. Oh, he froze. The singer's again. original back without her. Oh, okay. And she was okay. in the. Oh, am I, am I back? Yeah, you're back. Well, Sean Murphy was back. Okay, Sean Murphy was originally in the the play hair with meatloaf oh, cool. and then and then uh sean and meatloaf were signed to uh, motown and they did a, a thing called duets with stony and meatloaf and she was stony and of course meatloaf well, meatloaf is meatloaf yeah that had to be a goodie i like love it actually too barry joined us yeah, in the chat Nashville. room Barry's in our chat room, yeah. so say hey, hey, Barry, and hey, and, Barry. and Dawn, yeah. Dawn in the chat room wrote, "My husband hey, built." Barry. She wrote, he, "He, he, she wrote, my husband built Buck Owens Crystal Palace, which I don't have any idea what that means." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, sure enough, just the other night, uh, Meatloaf ended up in a place, and we were hanging out with Sean Murphy, and and uh, she said, "Come here and meet me. I want you to meet me." And I, I thought that was funny. But um, <laughs> yeah, well, meet, meet, meet. yeah, that could be very <laughs> interpreted incorrectly. Yeah. So um, I went over and he said, oh, you're the guy we've been listening to. He said, man, I love your songs. And and uh, we're going in the studio. Froze again. Darn it. Studio. Maybe. I was like, yeah, you got my number. You know what I my favorite so. country song is? You want to hear it? When I was a kid, 16 years old, it came out on the hit parade. I go out walking. After midnight. After midnight. I love that. And what's her name? Used to sing it, and I love that song. The lady. What was her name that sang? Patsy Klein. Patsy Klein. Absolutely. That was back in 1956. Way oh, back. Cool. When I was a young boy. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> I, that song still holds up. You know, somebody should do a cover on it. Absolutely. It's great lyrics. Yeah, I why think it's been covered it? a few times. <laughs> yeah, but why yeah, don't sure you not. do a cover on it? No, I mean, bring it up to date. It, old covers, not new. You should do a cover on it and bring it out. Let all the young people hear a good lyric for a change. <clears throat> well, he th probably thinks his songs are good lyrics. We love <laughs> no, no, but one. that song has very, you know, the lyrics. <laughs> but you know that real artists, only, only people who do covers are people who can't really write their own shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you Johnny, know, look, look, Johnny Mathis. Oh, he doesn't write. Oh, yeah. Johnny doesn't write. Johnny it's different Mathis. too. Johnny Mathis has already sold, you know, three hundred million yeah. records. Well, so he, he does sings. a cover. It's different. He sings. He doesn't write. That's right. Yeah, I like love it. So what we're gonna do then, real quick, I want to play. So I have if you if you ain't leaving me, and I thought I listened to all your videos on YouTube, and this is one that I just liked a lot. Um, it, it, and it's kind of new. It hasn't been up there very long, but I just thought it was really cool. So how about you introduce it for us real quick, and then uh, Roxy, you play it for everybody. All right. Go for it, Jay. Cool. This is an old, old song, and uh, we just brought it back here recently and did a, a new recording on it and then sat down and, and uh, did the video and, and rocked it out. I love it. I think it's awesome. Go, Roxy. Yeah. All right. Two, three, four. If you ain't leaving me, why am I missing you? Keep searching for the things we once had. If you ain't leaving me, why am I missing you? I'm talking about good times you keep bringing up sad. I know you love me I believe it's true 
But if it's over, baby, just say we're through. If you ain't leaving me, why am I missing you? Why do I feel so bad? Please forgive me any wrong I may have done. I know you said you'd stay through the pain and through the fall. I hear you say that you're here to stay. I hear you talking. Walk away. If you ain't leaving me, why am I missing you? Keep searching for the things we once had. If you ain't leaving me, why am I missing you? Talking about good times, you keep bringing up sin. I know you love me and I believe it's true But if it's over, baby, just say we're through If you ain't leaving me, why am I missing you? Why do I feel so bad? You couldn't hurt me anymore if you let me go So turn me loose baby, leave me alone You tried and tried to make it work for so long You say you're with me but you're already gone You ain't leaving me Why am I missing you Keep searching for things we once had. If you ain't leaving me, why am I missing you? I'm talking about good times you keep bringing up sin. You made your promise, said you'd be true, but I can't bear your sad eyes. So I'm walking away from you And if you ain't missing me Now that I'm leaving you Maybe it was love gone bad I freaking love that song. First of okay. all, I have to tell you, oh, I, like I think it. that song is amazing. As, as everyone that knows me knows, I'm not a fan of country music. But I <laughs> no, I'm not really. But I love okay. that song. That's a beautiful song. I like it. I don't lie. I never if I didn't like it, I simply would have said nothing. It's really a good song. And what a difference when the guitar is uh, loud and we heard it in the video as opposed <laughs> to here that we could hardly hear it. It's a good song, good lyrics. You you have a great and voice. you have a great voice. You really have a good voice. Really, and I, truly. I, I think um I think that for me because like I, I like some country music and I don't like all country music, but I think the country artists who actually can tell a story that you get the story when they're right. singing it are the ones who I think are really good. And you really know how to tell the story when I, you I, sing the song. You know who I don't like the shit kickers. When I hear <laughs> that's what they that's what they call no that's what they call them in Texas. Right, they call shit right. kickers. And they say that my only oh they they annoy me with that same crap. Yours is <laughs> you know, yours is music. Yours is not shit kicking. 
It's music. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Ron. No, I appreciate true. it. No, it's true. I would never. I don't need to flatter you. You, you know better. <laughs> no, seriously. I think I was wearing the same shirt in that video. I think I was. Oh, I don't <laughs> even know. Oh, you <laughs> might have been. So what, what does the J stand for in J. Edwards? Oh, man, I got about 100 stories I'll tell you on that one. So. Tell us one of them, my mama had my mama had 13 kids and I'm the 10th. Woo. She just said, she said, call this one, Jay. 10th letter of the alphabet. <laughs> it, it, it's a bunch oh, of junk. Thir- thir- F- 13 H- I- kids. You're right. It's the 10th letter of the alphabet. Ooh, she was busy. So she that's a lie. Call. I'm just, I'm just but lying that's a, to you. That's I mean. a funny one though. That's funny though. So it sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Oh my, I like, love that. So where are all, uh, are all the 13 children still around? They're, there's not. There's only three of us. Oh, he made that up. <laughs> oh, see, I made that you up. You fuck, Sam. We believed you. We believed you. <laughs> I was going to say you a poor mother that you ever get out of bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she's um. There. Yeah. I shouldn't be telling lies like that on her. She. She only had three of us. It was okay. a joke. It wasn't a lie. So now, are your are your brothers and si- or whoever are your other siblings? Are they in music also? They are. They are. Uh, amazing. Um, my mom and dad are amazing singers and musicians and, and, uh, my sister is in little rock. My brother's in little rock, Arkansas. And, and, uh, both of them have gone down some different roads, but they, uh, they're amazing and talented artists and singers. My brother leads worship at one of the major churches there in, uh, uh, in little rock. And yeah, he plays a little bit of everything, but he's, they're all amazing. So how many instruments do you play? (laughs) <laughs> um i play at um tons of them um growing up in church and, and you know you just had to fill in wherever you were needed so uh, one night i could be playing drums one night i could be playing bass guitar and, and uh i played trumpet played my brother uh, brother had a saxophone and i learned to play some on that my sister had a clarinet I had to learn a little bit of playing on that. There was always a tambourine or an old flat top guitar to strum on. So do you um, play all the guitar? Like do you play bass guitar and like, like I I know you play acoustic because we just saw it. (laughs) Well, you know, I, I play, uh, I play cards. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. That's it. That's all I play. Yes. Yeah. I I wish I played, you know, you can make some, you make some noise with that no yeah. but really i wish We're, i played the piano he said you can make noise with cards oh yeah we do it we play oh, yeah. every monday with my daughters and we make a lot of noise yelling. but he means musical noise oh yeah yeah, yeah you could you can make we, noise um, hey what about spoons years ago there was this yeah. famous guy in the 1940s who was in the movies and he played with soup spoons on his leg yep. remember yep. that yep. Right, you will you're too young to remember that but i remember that oh no i I've known people playing spoons a long time. Yeah, it's, uh, spoons, yeah they used yeah. to carry them around. We actually had a guy that, when I was living in South Carolina, and he'd come up to show and say, hey, man, I brought my spoons tonight. You going to let me play? So, <laughs> Yeah, and they really were f- fascinating yeah. to listen to Fun. because they did yeah. make music or glasses. They would get seven or eight glasses, fill them with water appropriately, and play on the glasses, and it, you could hear the music. Like like they were. Uh, it, was, it was like a xylophone. Right. So now we, are you – oh, go ahead. Can go you ahead. play a xylophone, xylophone? I can't play a xylophone. That's one thing. Um, it, it's kind of set up like a piano, but I don't and I don't sound that good right. at it. I, I can't really do that. But uh, we were here last, yesterday around the studio working, and uh, uh, somebody started talking about my pencil box. And there was like, what? what's that? And I was like, oh, I'll just check this out. And it's actually just a little cardboard box that uh, – that holds 12 pencils. And if you take six of them out, you get this kind of um, like a rattling sound that you can shake and, and uh, it's bigger and uh, thicker than maracas. So it's, it's just kind of, kind of got this really cool. cool Well, when I, when I was a kid, there was cigar boxes. If anybody had a cigar box, we took it and we strung rubber bands across it. And that Mm -hmm. was our guitar as a kid. Of course, it didn't sound like anything, but we thought we were Elvis Presley. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. So you have a new album coming out in February. I read someplace. Hopefully, hopefully uh, we'll we'll have it finished and ready by February. 
Um, it's another, it's got, uh, 17 songs on it and, um, being independent, I can put out as much as I want when I want. So absolutely. Uh, How about old personal stuff? You're married, you have kids. I am. I am married. I have two kids and, uh, between us, my wife and I, we have four and we just have a, uh, a brand new grandbaby. That's oh, five congratulations. Old. Are any, congratulations. Of, are any of your children headed for music? I have a daughter uh, that lives here in Nashville named Cricket Davis, and she is amazing. Um, she's, she sings? She's, yes, sir. Sings and plays ukulele, which oh, cool. can't That's stand interesting. I can't. I know he just froze. Stand ukulele, but it's pretty amazing. So. That's funny, though. That little girl won America's Got Talent playing a ukulele right. a couple years ago, and now she's like a big yeah. star. I forgot, I forgot her name, but... <laughs> But uh, which is kind of cool. Okay, so one of your kid, one of your kids is following your footsteps. Right, right. Both of my daughters actually play music and sing, but one of them is actually is the making only a one career. Pursuing. Okay, and are you in a rec- in are you in your, like is that like your home recording studio that you're sitting in? Do you record and I, do you record stuff in your house? I think he froze again. Oh, there studio. we go. Yeah, in my house and and so. Sorry about that, guys. And I thought we had it all worked out, but no, no, no. It's just, it's just sometimes it weakens and then it gets strong. It's your, it could be any. It's not our stuff, right, Jim? No, he's yeah, freezing on your end. Actually, Don too in the chat room is saying, stay with the honest Amish stuff, and your beard will be super like long and healthy. (laughs) Yeah, they're good friends of mine. Really cool guys. When we lived in Pennsylvania, uh, we used to go. Yeah, we used to go to a town because there was a store there that sold clothes real cheap and it was Amish. And I was fascinated how they had their little black horse and wagons with electrified uh, air conditioning in it and signal lights. And at <laughs> night, no, at night, all the homes were dark or candle lit. They didn't use electric. And they, I mean, they really stick to the fact that they're not using anything that we use. And the, the young people, it was interesting. I, I used to love watching the Amish people. I had never seen it before, so I'm from Florida. In Florida, right. like we don't have that. But I had, and uh, it was interesting. It was like a lot of fun. So you guys can follow Jay Edwards uh, on Instagram. He's at J the letter J uh, Edwards underscore music, and his his uh, website is jedwardsmusic.net. dot net. And um, um, I have jedwardsmusic.com dot com now too. So if oh. You go to- just okay. go to jaywardsmusic.net or .com and it'll come right to me. Oh, that was good to get both. It's <laughs> funny because when I first saw your thing, like I saw uh, J. Edward, and that's like Jedward. And Jedward is like these famous twins. I don't know if you know oh, this. I cannot believe you know who they are. Uh, yeah. We've met them. At, we meet, they're at parties here all yeah, the time, all so the we time. see them all the time. And <laughs> so not- We get around, kiddo. We get around. So when I first saw it, <laughs> I thought Jedward. I was like, oh, my God, there's two Jedwards. But I didn't get that. It was J. Edward. No. Um, and so, so, yeah, they're, and so, they're really cool, yeah. those guys, those so twins. So you know of them also. How do I you know, know of them? them. Yes. Oh, you've never met them. Well, I never did because – I have some friends in England and they were like, man, when you come over here to play, you're going to have to do something different with your name because there's these guys <laughs> named Jedwards and, and that's not you. So yeah, um, they're really popular and they hang out with Tara Reed a lot. And we yeah. just happen to go yeah. to a lot of events that they're always, they're always there. And always. I've actually met them and talked to them. They're really nice. They're mm-hmm. nice yeah. kids. Nice, nice kids is right. Uh, you have a lot, makes of a lot of pictures with them. Remember you took, yeah, I took, I took a bunch of pictures with them just cause I was like, Oh my God, they have like, they have like wicked, like, loyal fans i mean there's websites de- devoted just to them and i was like oh my gosh you know i don't know how right. that even like happened they were but, very nice clean cut young kids yeah they they were like nice very, but they very, drank a lot well, <laughs> well no but they were not like no they were fun they were not like bad kids they were, no they were fun they were good boys they were good so yeah. so let's do a wish thing so like if you could like go and play with anybody living or dead who's somebody who you think oh my god i would like love to go and perform with this person uh, the the list goes on and on. Um, <laughs> give me I, two. But I, I give uh, Bruce Willis. I mean, that may be weird, but Bruce Willis uh, is one of them, and uh, I just love to to hang out with him and uh, and play some stuff. Um, 
See, I'd like to do that with Kevin Costner because, like, I th- I love Kevin Costner. I, How about Elvis Presley? Would you ever ever like to have played with Elvis? I I, I, mean, I, I never like Elvis. Him. I never like okay. Elvis. I'll go with you on that, Mr. Ron. I'm uh, I'm kind of the same way. It's yeah, me you know, too. Elvis was too Hollywood. Yeah, it was it was cool, but it probably not my favorite. Um, no, he was I, more uh, rock and roll than country. Yeah, Joe Cocker would have been. On That's my a good list. choice, Joe. Uh, Joe Cocker's a good one. How about Country yeah. Joe and the Fish? <laughs> nah, I don't know that one. So, <laughs> oh, you don't know Country Joe? Country yeah. Joe was like you. That's why I liked his music. Country Joe was big in the seventies, and he used to sing I, sort of, sort of the stuff that you do. Yeah. Yeah, Country Joe was. A, I, I don't know who that is either. But Ron, anytime we have a country person or or someone who's been in the in the biz, music <laughs> no, business for a long time, country, he, he country likes Joe, it. Joe sounded like this guy does with the gravelly voice, and his songs were really uh, interesting, and his arrangements were good. There's people out there, if you want to look him up, look him up. His music is online somewhere. I don't think he's with us anymore because he would be quite old. But um, yeah, Country Joe and the yeah. Fish, they were good. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. I, I love that it. That was so. back in my hippie days. So, uh, so, uh, was you hippie. mentioned, hmm? go ahead. Costner, I think, um, I like his, I like his modern West stuff. I really liked the, the band sound, but I would love to write songs for, for Kevin Costner. Yeah. Wouldn't that be West. cool? Yeah, I would yeah, too. I, well, you write well, maybe you will. I hope so. Actually, I don't care about, it. I just want to like meet him actually. Cause like, I, I think he's cool. <laughs> So it would be a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So we got like a minute left to go. So you guys follow. Uh, in a minute, what do you wish for in the new year? Yeah, what's New Year's resolution? No, just what is your wish? To be doing what we're doing, but just on a way bigger scale. We really need to okay. get out there and reach more people. Good for you. I think you need to, too, because I think the music's great. Everybody in the chat room like loves it. You guys, he's going to have a new album sometime in February. If you go to Jay Edwards' music.com or music.net you can find out uh, more about it and his music's i'm sure you're on all the streaming platforms too i'm sure right all of them yeah he's on all the streaming platforms you guys and he's got a ton of videos on youtube that's how i pulled that video for uh if you ain't leaving me and uh, we love this so we want to thank you for coming on the show we want to thank barry uh for setting this whole thing up and we wish you a happy new year and much happy success year. in all that you do Keep thank trucking. you guys Keep thank trucking. you guys you're awesome all right Take have a care, good one man. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. That was Jay Edwards, hey. superstar. We want to thank everybody for tuning in today with our fabulous guests, Richie Rich and Mr. D, and then Jay Edwards, Nashville's best kept music secret. Um, it's all fun. Chat room. I hope you guys had a good time. So happy to see Twyla and and uh, oh shoot, Courtney and everybody in there and Diane um, with our, along with our regist- uh, our regulars. Um, Don, we hope you feel better and. Uh, Who's in there? B's in there. I don't know. Everybody who's in the chat room, you guys. Backpack John is in there. Uh, I don't know. It's going like nobody's like writing anything, so I don't know who was all in there. But It's coming uh, up on the screen. But you guys, thank you so much. Uh, Twyla, too. I want to tell everybody, Twyla, who's in our chat room, been in our chat room for a couple of weeks. Uh, Angela introduced us and uh, met her uh, in person on New Year's Eve, one of the coolest ladies you will ever meet in your life. So, Twyla, thank you so much for all your support. And, uh, and everybody in the chat room, thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye, next everybody. Week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay happy. Bye. Bye-bye. Woo. In the mix, yeah, we in the mix. It's another episode. Here we go, the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Interviewing the hottest news that you was up to today's celebrities. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly. Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool. Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude. Chat room is live and you would be a fool not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Come and watch it live on W4CY Radio. Miss some past episodes? Download on iTunes. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Russell.